okay so the demo of a robot class is here so it's a regular stuff again uh, launch the browser and enter the orange hrm page and then without using send keys i have initiated an object for the robot class which is new robot class and the object is a robot and here you will see access um, you will see access to many methods like delay create get auto get class get pixel color hash um, key press event key release event mouse move mouse press mouse wheel which means which is used for scrolling so if you want to do scroll operation the easiest way to do it is using robot class so it has various I mean, access to various methods out of them i am using the key press events so with the help of key press events i am entering each letter a d m i n in that way i am going to set the text for my uh, username in the username okay so now let me run this one before i run it uh, okay let me run this one let's see if it works or still the application is under maintenance launch the firefox browser okay still it looks like under maintenance but still you see that it has entered admi right so that means it's working with the help of robot class you have actually entered the text now similarly with the help of javascript also you can enter the text so there are many things defined over here you will see with the help of javascript this is a demo um, which i have prepared as part of my java to roads java road to selenium sessions Mm, where i am actually going to explain in detail about how to use java script executor uh, but in this current question our interest is about how to enter the text i have created an object js which is for javascript execution in the beginning over here uh, and that is going to trigger the driver instance so on the driver instance it is going to perform this uh, enter the text operation which is entering the password and username over here so with that, with that object i have access to this method execute script and this is how i can enter the username into this particular web element and i enter this part password to this particular web element so this is how i can type the text without using send keys method you you will not see send keys method over here right so this is one of the way mm, you can see like uh, there are many sessions that are prepared in an organized way like we are covering test ng mm, we are covering dynamic cs different web locators mouse operations keyboard operations so there is a lot of planned uh, for learning selenium and test ng along with the java classes even java also explained with the help of a bank application so I'm i have designed some classes in a way that it's like by doing the project you learn the concepts of java which are like polymorphism how to do overloading over riding and other java oops concepts so that is defined in this particular uh, session but it is still in progress i have loaded only four or first videos of java but selenium and test ng is to be loaded so st stay tuned for that that is going to be very interesting and in a most fascinating way and in a most easiest way um, this is getting designed okay so now coming to the current interest okay this is how you do it let me run this script so when you see um, the username and password are entered it means that okay using this uh, it is working without using send keys also you are able to enter the username and password okay let me run this i think the application is still under maintenance probably but let us see i think the login functionality was working earlier so it will work now also even though it is in chinese or japanese so let's see so it has launched the firefox browser and it entered the url it entered the admin and password okay it clicked on login button see okay using javascript it has done so it is doing some other operations using javascript uh, as defined 
over here so it is doing lot of other stuffs also so nothing to discuss about it we'll discuss later in other sessions when we are discussing about java road to selenium uh, tutorial okay so that's all now the next question is 13th question which is how do you handle captcha so when you're automating an application normally uh, it start with the login page probably if it is e-commerce application or any booking sites or any application which needs credentials uh, you know it, it will have a login page so every application and recently this is something capture is something which you're seeing in every application so this is added for additional security purposes so that it won't make it easy for somebody who just log in so mostly it is about avoiding the robots uh, to log in so it will recognize between a machine or a person who is trying to access the application so in order to do that um, there is this capture introduced as a security for logging into an application so that's capture and so the question is how do you handle capture in the sense how do you automate an application that has capture so that's the question so for this one i gave a thought for, for a while because the applications which are i have automated so far um, though they are e-commerce applications and uh, banking or telecom applications which need to log in uh, to do certain operations inside of it none of them were having capture or disabled capture option uh, when it came for testing so uh, for this one i gave a thought and then i answered like for the applications which i have worked uh, it came with capture disabled for us to automate and we have automated it if we have to handle the capture then there is no purpose of you know implementing the capture itself because the purpose itself is you know to avoid robots uh, access the application and when we say robot it also includes the automation tools so the very purpose of introduction capture will uh, will be defeated if it is automatable using the selenium or any automation tool so i said that we can't handle it uh, then the interviewer uh, raised into a discussion like using third party tools do you think it is not possible to handle capture then i answered like there may be third party tools which are there to handle it but i haven't worked on them so that's how this question uh, is gone now moving to the 14th question it is about when do you use xpath so here uh, interviewer just trying to understand like how good i am with you know object locators and how good i am using xpath so he wanted to see he wanted to see how good i am with working on xpath because this is the most used web locator strategies for many of the applications uh, besides to the static web locators so mm, to answer this question it will be like whenever you know uh, usage of static locators becomes uh, not much useful and they are not letting you to identify the application in a unique way then you go have to go for xpath as an option to use and also when you wanted to handle an object which is loaded dynamically so loading dynamically an object itself means that uh, using the static web lubricators such as id um, id class type uh, link text so on whichever are there uh, itself means that uh, it is static it's not static since it's not static it is dynamic there comes in to the concept of using xpath so that is the place where x usage of xpath will suits more so that's how i explained it and further we discuss some more about uh, options of using xpath and we discussed about a case wherein you know i was asked uh, how do you handle such situation the situation will go like this that there are some web elements uh, which are of course dynamic so there you have to use xpath anyways but this specific case is like um, the object is not only just dynamic and also at the same time uh, let's say that you don't find any way that 
you can pinpointly uh, study the pattern of uh, X path to use it so how do you proceed it so then in that case I have given explanation like if the web element is not dynamic and you are not able to find any pattern of using the dynamic X path also um, then there will be a nearby element which could be static static and is of not that much complicated which could be the child or parent of the object which you wanted to handle so in that case uh, with the help of that object I can track the actual object which I wanted to automate so which means that uh, I have explained about the concept of uh, some more XPath implementations like using the concepts of sibling uh, parent child notation uh, so these are called as XPath uh, access concepts so with the help of them I said that I, I would handle such uh, objects while automating an application so that was most around about uh, when do you use XPath and why do you use XPath now moving on to the next question which is 15th question uh, what are the asserts that you have used in test ng so now we moved on to test ng so if you see the pattern of interview so this has covered about the regular QA questions which are for lead level and starter level also and then we have started discussing about art automation concepts using selenium and now we have we have moved on to the testing g concept so the interviewer is looking for everything so uh, this just went on now we are at test ng concepts so what are the different asserts that you have used in test ng is a uh, current question so to answer this i have just explained like what are the assets basically are used for and then i have explained that there are uh, these different types of asset like assert true assert false equal not equal not null and there are few more different assets also so these are uh, the ones which i have used so basically just wanted to see that whether you have used the asserts or not and if you are not able to answer this question this means that you haven't automated you are just uh, pretending that uh, you have you are trying to uh, you know project somebody's experience or you are not into too much about it so asserts is the most common use feature in order to uh, do a verification or checkpoints that will determine whether the actual test case is passed based on certain condition uh, which we are it's like simply verifying the expected result versus the actual result that's the test case obviously right that is achieved through the asserts so that's what and we also have discussed like how do I use how did I use assert true and assert false I have explained that also now moving on to the next question 16th question how do you exclude groups in your test ng while executing so uh, at the time when I was asked this question it didn't uh, tick my mind like how do I do it so I was just blabbering around general usage of groups like how do I group the test cases and uh, how do you how do I ex uh, exclude a test case without executing like by using the enable and disable feature so I started explaining those things but uh, the interviewer said that uh, he don't want to exclude a test case out from executing he wanted to which means that he is not looking for an answer of using the enable or disable feature he is looking for how to exclude a group itself uh, from the execution um, it didn't occur to my mind so I have just explained about the groups and all but uh, the answer to this one is using certain tags in the test ng XML so the tags that are that can be used are include and exclude so using these tags in test ng XML you can include or exclude a particular group from execution so we don't have uh, I mean this video is becoming too much uh, lengthy so I'm not going to show you the demonstration like I have done for the previous questions uh, so just this is how the format is going to look like so in a test ng XML we will have groups normally so inside the groups you can use the run parameters uh, and uh, the run tags you can use the include or exclude tags in order to include a particular group or exclude a particular 
group from the execution so these tags will be added inside the test uh, tags so this is how you can include or exclude a group from your test engine execution so that's the explanation for this question now let us move on to the 17th question the 17th question is uh, when a defect is find by a user in a production and it is missed in QA what are your actions so this is a sort of lead level question uh, so let me read it out again when a defect is found in production and it is missed in QA what are your actions so I gave a thought about it and I just try to imagine to the situation and I have I mean experience these issues in my previous projects also so I just recollected those things and what I have done and I have explained it my point of view like what I have done so this will go as it is as, as, as follows so when a defect is found in production which means like obviously it is not either tested in QA somehow that it is I mean the test case itself is not present somehow or the test case is there but the tester or quality analysis uh, misinterpret the test case or he didn't execute the test case at all properly so these are the uh, most possible and closest options that could occur that's the only reason which will lead the pro uh, defect into production and which will be slipped in the QA so based on those two reasons I have started explaining so the procedure so I have explained the same thing so since it is missed uh, by the QA um, so this is about root cause root cause is uh, like I said two possible things if it is missed from the requirement mapping then accordingly we have to tighten the review processes at those stages like if the test cases itself is not there it means like uh, while writing the test cases there is no good mapping against the requirement and that's how this feature or that particular functionality is missed to cover in the test case itself which means like we have to tighten the review process at those stages uh, only then you know the next time you won't miss the test case so that's one option and there are test cases uh, which uh, are supposed to test that defect which occurred in production but somehow you know the tester didn't do it properly so that means that we have to educate the uh, tester or quality analysis like to focus more on uh, like uh, understand and let him know that this shouldn't happen and you know do a validation of the test results by a senior QA member so these are all the steps which are uh, you know you, you have to suggest going forward to prevent these defects uh, these issues from occurring so that's how I started explaining is the interviewer is happy with this but still uh, he is actually looking for one more uh, filter before even we go into that process so he believe that uh, first of all we should analysis that it means the acceptance criteria or not so before we go to these steps bef even before starting analyzing the defect itself I mean analyzing the defects and trying to do or follow this process we could stop it and we could immediately communicate to the client mm, so without spending this much of time in doing all these things you just have to cross check that it is meeting the acceptance criteria or not if it is not meeting the acceptance criteria you just have to uh, inform the team inform the uh, client that it didn't meet our acceptance criteria so we don't accept these as defects or misses from QA side so it is uh, something which has a chance that it is uncovered only in the production so that is the first step uh, the interviewer is expecting uh, before this analysis which I have explained so that's about the 17th question and the 18th question is about QA and UAT defects differentiation in Zira so the purpose of asking this question is the interviewer want to really know that I have used I have experience of using Zira or any test management tool so for this I have explained that I am not much experienced in Zira most of my previous works are in QZ or HP ALM so there like we have the test phases which are defined so uh, the filters which are created by the admins so you just have to use those filters and differentiate between the 
UID defects and the previous test phase defects. So that's how I told and in Zira, uh, though I didn't use uh, Zira extensively based on uh, the knowledge I have, I explained that we can uh, make use or of labels with the help of labels we can differentiate uh, different stages of the testing process and we can thus differentiate the defects found in different test phases so now coming to the 19th question what are the types of defects that you have locked in here again he just wanted to uh, you know verify that uh, you are really an experienced person and you really have worked on or not so such questions will you know find out or differentiate between the fake profile and the original profile so what are the types of defects that you have logged in so I just started explaining uh, I started recollecting what I have logged in I started explaining and broadly these are categorized as like uh, mostly these are functional defects in fact but uh, in functional defects itself like some defects are cosmetic in nature like it's a spelling mistake in the UI interface but mostly based on the nature of testing what we have done we deal with the functional aspects of the testing so I just summarized it as functional defects or what we have logged in and also there are defects which we log in for between the interfaces and uh, interfaces not being connected that will raise to the defects so uh, that is how I answered this question this is the again another most common question that will be asked and there are many answers to this question so some people will start explaining the different uh, types of defects in relating to the different types of testing ways like people will talk about uh, I mean somehow this will mislead to the question like black box testing and white box testing so people will talk about this somehow I don't understand but uh, I have seen people are mis misleading this question to something else but this is the explanation I have given if you find that uh, you have most better answer please mention it in the comment and the last question is the 20th question which is like uh, about zero defects by CVRD and priority so he just asked me like what are the CVRD and priorities that you have given uh, while you are raising the defects in zero so in zero mostly you will see high medium critical showstopper such explanation when it comes to CVRD and also uh, priority it's most common terms but CVRD um, though CVRD is high medium low in brackets there will be also external uh, explanation about like highly impacting the business and low impact to the business so there will be some explanation so I just recollected the part and I have explained it and yeah so that's all about uh, the 20, 20th question which is the last question and thank you for watching this video if you like this video click on the like button and if you like it even more don't forget to subscribe this channel and also don't forget to spread a word to your friends who are looking for such content and also if you have any questions also if you want to join this mission with us please do write to sharetesttube at gmail.com and also if you have missed any of these videos and also if you are a person who likes to read the content as this please visit fourwarestyles.blogspot.com thank you for watching this video